Welcome back, everybody. I have the distinct pleasure of speaking to somebody that you've all been watching on Netflix and CBS and all of the other networks uh, forever and ever and ever, even though she's a really young uh, uh, actress. Her name is Lindsay Kraft. Welcome, Lindsay, to the program. Hi. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Oh, it's, it, it's my pleasure. It gives me a chance to, uh, yet again, kind of uh, take a look and see all of the places that you have been and you've been on two of my top 10 uh, dramas uh, of all time. So I'm really uh, happy to see that. What are yeah. they? Uh, Suits is number three on my okay. uh, favorite list. And you've been to uh, one episode, uh, season five, episode five, I believe. Um, so I've seen you before, uh, okay. absolutely. And then uh, you are in Newsroom, which is uh, my number six uh, on the list. So. Wow. Again, unfortunately, they didn't have more of you. Go ahead. What's your number one? The West Wing. Hmm. The West Wing is my number one. You wouldn't be able to have been on West Wing. You're too young for it. But I work with Martin Sheen. Yeah. Uh, which, 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 oh, with Grey's Anatomy? Grey's and Frankie. Grey's and Frankie. <gasps> See, I haven't watched Grey's and Frankie. I've heard about it. Obviously, I know it's on Netflix. I, it never kind of made it on my, you know, I need to watch this list, which keeps increasing. So Martin is on Grace and Frankie. Okay. It, it, it just went up a, a few places. <laughs> <laughs> so what was, uh, how was it working with, uh, with Martin? I mean, I love him and everything he's been in that I've seen. He's the very, very best. I mean, he's like, he's like my dad. I mean, like we're really, really close. He's so wonderful. I work with him. Like, I mean, I don't know how many episodes we've shot, but I work with him like in scenes where it's just, you know, me and um, him and Sam Waterston, the three of us. Yeah. As he's one, he's so wonderful. So caring, wants to really know about me. You know what I mean? Not just like talking about himself, like he's really like wonderful. Couldn't say even better things than I could possibly think of. That's awesome. Um yeah okay and uh again I, I i looked at the show so i know kind of the the main uh, folks there i think they've taken uh so many of the most wonderful actors they can find and they just said all right let's make a show together uh, yeah. it just, like everybody is immensely uh you know wonderful and i've seen them for a long long time everywhere yeah that's good um with uh, with Martin, it's interesting. Have you seen uh, kind of the I, again? It, it may be market uh, driven, but uh, I see Martin pop up with the commercials for you know some sort of a uh, uh, some sort of a healthcare payment plan where he's. Oh yeah, in, I saw that. I saw that. The Southern grocery store. And that's very funny. So that's that's actually the the last I kind of have seen of uh, of Martin aside from there is a West Wing kind of reunion that they did. Um, yeah where it's going to be you know, airing, I, I think sometime soon to get out the vote. And uh, oh. one, of, one of my friends is in it, so I saw the photo of, uh, of two of them. And then I haven't seen Martin other than that, so. Well, I highly, highly recommend watching Grace and Frankie. It's really fun, it's a great show. Yeah, I will. And uh, is it uh, is it going on or is it uh, is Netflix uh, you know, canceling it? What's happening on it? No, it's going on. It's the longest running comedy on Netflix, actually. That's wonderful. How many years has it been now? Um, I think we're on the the eighth, seventh season. Wow, that's amazing. Uh, yeah. Okay, I I am definitely out of date. And what I that's I I find that you know I want to know as much as possible, but it's impossible to watch all of the shows that are out there. So it you really can, is. You can choose. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's that's awesome. I actually I wanted to ask you about uh, kind of uh, Grace and Frankie because in one of the interviews that I've seen you do uh, from you know fairly recently, you you were talking about kind of Netflix and um, if I understood correctly, please uh, correct me if I didn't. That with Netflix, it's a little weird because like after the third season, they stopped making money on it, so that's why they they kind of cancel shows. Is that correct? That I miss mishear something? No, no, I don't. I, 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 that's what I was told, you know, I, I, I sort of feel bad that that information is out there because people have asked me about that since I did that interview. Um, but that's what I've heard that they don't, it's not really, 
they don't really make money on that because they're people are not um subscribing to netflix because of a show that's already kind of on the air they're mm. they like they get new subscribers if there's like a new show coming on so well yeah. okay i again we we don't know whether that's uh, that's true or not yeah. i'm happy that regardless of it they're keeping uh the show on the air but to me, again, from from a pure entrepreneurial perspective, and I'm a business person on the on the side, you know, or maybe I'm an actor on the side. I don't know yet. Um, it's it's three times so more expensive to gain a client than it is to keep a client. So uh, you know, to whether you know they can look at the books and say that they're not making any money, it it's not exactly the way that it works because keeping your clients happy and keeping the people who are your subscribers uh, already i am one of them um and now if uh, if they cancel the show i'd be pissed um so would it make me leave netflix probably not because there are other shows that i enjoy there but i'm also a subscriber to amazon prime and i have the disney uh you know uh, plus and i have you know hulu so there right. are enough options and i haven't even started watching uh, apple tv to which again i have subscription so you know, if Netflix or any of these uh, streaming services kind of do enough to uh, to tick off the uh, customer base, you know, you don't know. So they should keep their uh, shows anyway. Uh, I agree. That's my opinion. <laughs> Mine too. <laughs> and then um, from the acting perspective, you know, the actors that I talk to, uh, again, um, and this is this is one of those silly conversations because as an actor. If it's a great uh, show, you're going to go and you're going to do it and uh, and you love uh, being a part of it. But being on Netflix is not the most profitable place to be as an actor. Mm -hmm. um, it's, like I'm I'm not a regular on Grace and Frankie, although I've been on, I don't know. Uh, 18 episodes. 18 episodes and more because I don't think the new ones are on there for the season. Um, oh, so but it's about like half the season for each season around. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm in the family. So it's like, I, you know, like I'm on the show and I'm, you know, getting paid as a guest star. Yeah, so they, they and again, th this is probably more conversations for, for agents and managers and I'll shut up at this point, but, um, Not you know, were no, there any- true. What, what did you, sorry, I missed what you said. I was just going to say that, you know, after some, after some point, you know, you're, you're a guest star long enough, shouldn't they, you know, kind of bump well, you to a regular or? Yes, you would hope, um, but not if you're on a show with Jane Fonda and Lily Tomlin, it's not, you know, they can easily, I hate to say it, but, you know, nowadays, especially like actors are kind of replaceable and they'll reroute the story to suit, you know, I think they sort of knew hiring me as a guest star to begin with. They didn't know that it was going to continue the role, I don't think, when they first wrote it. Um, but that's the risk they need to take because I could have, you know, and I did. I, I booked a series regular while I was on that show, which didn't actually interfere with it because any everything can be worked out. Schedules are always you can work out. Yeah. Um, but it just comes with the territory. I knew what I was getting into. It wasn't like I didn't know. So. Hey, listen, I mean, um, any job is a job. Uh, and, you know, the jobs where you get to work with these incredible people are jobs that you want to have. So, yes, agreed. <laughs> um, I was talking to uh, George Newbern, uh, who, you know, was on Scandal for a long time. And uh, mm -hmm. George was saying that, yeah, you know, guest star, guest star, guest star. He kept on thinking that they're going to kill him off pretty much in every episode. They never did. And then finally, at the last season, he gets bumped to a regular and then they end the show. <laughs> right of course <laughs> yeah so mm -hmm. it's you know you're you're jumping the shark anytime you get a guest star to a regular apparently it's true it's true yeah, yeah. it's it's interesting but again uh looking at uh, at kind of your you know imdb uh profile and looking at all of the shows that you've been on um does the industry view you right now or for the last you know couple of years as here's a TV uh, actress as opposed to a movie actress. I'm not sure it really kind of works like that anymore because I, I don't, I don't, unless you're a movie star. Mm -hmm. I would say like most of the movie stars, like kind of in my age range, most of them were like kid stars. They were like 
you know, if you think about it's like Natalie Portman, Anne Hathaway, Scarlett Johansson, yep. um, um, almost a Kirsten Dunst. And, you know, a lot of these people are now are doing television anyways. It doesn't really, um, I think it's more like, oh, does she do comedy or does she do drama? That's usually kind of what I hear. And I do both. I mean, I would say I, I really kind of go back and forth, but for the past few years, um, I've been doing a lot of comedy. So that seems to be, you know, what maybe people see me as, or I don't know, but I, I've always been like, I'm an actor. I don't, I, I mean, because yeah. I started doing drama when I first started there, mm -hmm. I had gotten feedback from a casting director when I first moved to LA. And she said, not funny, not our lead girl. <laughs> and for like, I was like, oh, I guess I'm not funny. All right. Like I sort of just take what people say sometimes it's like face value. It was a really good lesson to learn because I mean, I it's how I make a living is like through comedy. I know. And do you know who else I heard for a long time that she was not funny and not a leading person? Rachel Brosnahan. So, right. Yeah. She's terrific. Well, yeah. Yeah. What what did they know, right? Uh, no. so it's 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 such a such a weird uh, such a weird business. Uh, but you know, comedy. It's good to be at least uh, uh, seen and trusted as somebody who can handle comedy because comedy is its own animal and it, it's it has its own rhythm and you really need to understand it and you need to understand you know multicam versus not and it, it's uh, you need to kind of have that repertoire. So it's good that uh, you're being perceived as somebody who can do both. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, do you find that one is easier than the other, or uh, they're just different? Um, drama is much easier for me. Really? Um, yeah. Why? Um, I just think I have um, like m my access to my emotions is just readily there all the time, um, mm -hmm. and I find it just like I'm not worried about. Um, the timing of something, I feel like much more free to just be who I am. And I think a lot of the times I end up booking like dramas that have some like there's a, I'm somehow always playing like a funny role in a drama. I don't know okay. why. I, um, I'm about to do something. It's the same thing. It's like I'll be on a medical show and it's like the one funny part. But but sometimes it's not funny, but I somehow infuse humor in it and not to feel like and it's like, oh, wow, that's that's what a great moment as opposed to like, oh, this needs to be funny. And I was on a multicam for a year and it was the most challenging, um, invigorating experience I've ever had. But there's just a lot of pressure, I think, when especially like in a multicam. I see. And uh, let's let's make sure that everybody's on the same page. And uh, if people don't know the difference between a multicam and a single cam, when you're talking multi-cam and why it's so much pressure, why would that be? That's because it's filmed in front of a live audience. Well, usually, so, you know, now who knows what's happening. You know, there, my friend who is on the Connors is, it's, you know, there's no audience, there's it's whatever. Um, but uh, even though you can do it time after time, like you don't have to worry about messing up. I don't like messing up. And um, you just like want to put on a good show and you want to be funny and you want to be like, um, you just want to be that reliable actor. You don't want to be like the person who just like, although the show that I was on, all of the guys messed up every, every line and they would be so comfortable with it, just like taking it back, just like starting the line again. And I'd be like, yeah. like I would, I, if I messed up, I was just like, I was just mortified and everyone made fun of me that I cared so much, but I, but I just, I just like, I just like being really good all the time. I don't know. No, I, I can see how that would be uh, that would be difficult. I've um, I went to see a man with a plan when we were in LA. I'm in Chicago, so uh, in LA, I think last year or the year before we went there, and then uh, you know uh, we went to see the show. So I was a part of the studio audience, so I kind of got to experience that whole thing for the first and only time, and it was really fascinating how you know they literally have uh, people on the stands that are entertaining you and they're making sure you understand you know what uh, what kind of needs to get done and they yeah. they working with the audience all the time and it's kind of this duality where 
you're having your own little show right here and then everybody's quiet and then they're shooting and you're seeing all, all yeah. of the stage and it's it's a very interesting environment there's nothing like it i once i started doing it i was like i don't ever want to do anything ever again even though like i'm saying it was so hard there was something yeah. about it that is like so special and mm. i never ever thought that i would be on a multicam because i do a lot of like I, I don't consider myself like broad a lot of this like i know that you watch getting on is that what you watched or whatever uh or no? out Someone of the, who uh, the show on hbo um uh, the one no? that i watched of you or the one that i was just mentioning the multicam no, getting on a show that I was on on HBO like years ago. Yeah, um, I have seen parts of like it. really like really subtle, like mm -hmm. you know, not broad in any way. Just like yeah. you know, even like an eye roll can be funny, as opposed to like having to really um, perform in front of people for an audience of people. Just like mm -hmm. there's just something so hard about it that I loved because I was like, oh, I love because I love being challenged. I love I love being bad at something and getting better. Uh, yeah, I, I certainly understand that. And i have it's interesting, again, that you say how difficult it is. And this is not arguing with that at all, but just trying to understand perspectives. Uh, I heard that uh, a lot of actors love doing multi-cam because in terms of a week planning, right? So you have time to rehearse and you have time to go through it and really kind of work with the script. And then you're shooting. So your hours are better you know, there's no 15 hour uh, kind of uh, days. It's an environment that, you know, some of the actors love doing them because they can actually go home and they can take their kids and they can do some activities with them. Uh, I, actually they prefer them. I, I actually don't relate to that because okay. like I, I, everyone would be joking about that. I'd be like, I want to stay here all day long. I love acting. I love everything about it. I love driving up to the lot. I love pulling into my spot. I love yeah. going for lunch. I love sitting, going to crafty craft services. I love rehearsal. There, to me, there can never be enough rehearsal. I want to rehearse until I'm down on the floor and someone has to shake me to get up. I just like, and you know, I don't have children, so I'm not like try. I, I like. I guess that's a bonus. Like you can like, yeah, I'm like I can also take a yoga class in the morning before work, and it yeah. is. But I just like, um. I see how that is. It's like a huge plus. I was like, oh, they they gave us to the wrong girl because I was like, I'll be on the show for 18 hours and I'm not complaining. I just love, I love, I love what I do. That's and that's all. awesome. And again, the the love of acting. So I I, I totally get it. Um, I do. What, what is it about uh, acting that you love so much? Why did why did you get into it? Um, it sort of like took me a long time to really get in it professionally because. I didn't know that I could do it. Like I didn't know I'd never really um been around it like growing up. Um I was in like two musicals in high school, but I was also an athlete, so I was sort of like that was really my focus. Um mm -hmm. and um I would always do these little performances for like I would do um uh Will Smith used to, you know, do rap. And stuff i don't know if you remember but like he had this song called parents just don't understand and i like did the whole like i memorized the whole thing had a whole dance set up and i would perform it at every birthday party people would be like lindsay lindsay and i would do it i would like i would cast people to play like little parts but i would do all of the main parts and yeah. i would just kind of like come alive doing it and you know so there were like little things like that throughout like my life where i would just sort of like it was i would just like love it i used to my i one of my best friends growing up is jamie lynn sigler from the sopranos mm -hmm. yeah so um and she and i were in chorus together in high school in middle yeah. school and yeah. um we were both sopranos and i remember she got the audition for the sopranos and i was like oh you're gonna get it because like you're a soprano yeah. and you're gonna have to sing sopranos um but she was like the actress from my high school. And it was, it, I used to go see her in all of these musicals. I would be the first one in line to see every single musical year after year at like the na at like the town thing. And never for one second did I think, oh, I maybe I should audition for this. It just didn't occur to me. It didn't like, I just didn't think that I, this is a big part of, I think, like who I am as an actor as well as is because I, I think, 
I sort of was waiting a long time for someone to tell me to do something as opposed to, um, which is what eventually happened is that like, I loved it so much that I had to find my own way of getting there. And yeah. I ultimately did, but you know, that's sort of so a shortcut. What was that thing that kind of flipped the switch and says, oh, well, I'm, I'm an actress, I'm gonna do this. Oh, I, I took, I went to the University of Maryland and I took, um, I took an acting class. I did not have a good teacher, but I remember just like, l we would do these like meditations in the beginning of class for like 30 minutes. And like, I can specifically remember some of the meditations and like where my brain went in those, hmm. in those classes. And we had to memorize, um, we had to perform one monologue and I performed a monologue from this play called Living at Home by Anthony Giardina. I don't know how I just remember that. That just like, I haven't thought about that in forever. Um, and I just remember just like, no one helped me with it. I just like, I just went over and over and over. And I was just like, and every time I would do it for myself, like in the mirror, I was like, I love this. I love this so much. This is so crazy. But I also, so I was a model growing up and I had some opportunities to audition for things like as a, and ended up getting very close to them, but I didn't know what I was doing. It was sort of just like this weird thing that ended up happening. So back, so when I was in college and I performed this monologue and I remember this one girl said to me after, she's like, she's like, was mine okay? I was like, yeah, you were terrific. And I was like, was mine okay? She's like, Lindsay, every, she's like, if you just went up there and just like read the alphabet, everyone would be entertained. And I did not, under, I was like, what are you talking about? And she's like, you're an actress. And I was like, and it sort of is like something I just remember so well at the time, I didn't understand what she was saying, but it's sort of just kind of like, it did stick with me where I was like, oh wait, like I never felt good at anything, like like scholastically. I was just kind of like middle of the road, mediocre at stuff, like just never felt really smart. But this was like the time where I was like, I am, I think I'm smart. Like, <laughs> I think I'm, I think I'm good at this. And then, when I, I moved to New York and I wanted to be a casting director because that's what I had in my head. I'm like, oh, because I love I love casting. I've always been obsessed with casting. And I somehow I like got in touch with this agent, found me through this modeling thing. And they were like, we want you to get into an acting class. And I was like, will you pay for it? Because as a model, you never you're told to never pay for anything. And my parents were like, make sure they're paying for it. And I was like, Okay, so I asked them and they like, their eyes just like bugged out. They're thinking, who is this girl asking us to pay for her acting lesson? But they paid for one lesson, I think just to show me that they were, th that this was like legitimate. Yeah. And I remember that class was like weird, but then I went to another class and I remember my dad dropped me off. Like we were in the city to go see Frankie and Johnny, that play. And he was like, I'll, I'll, I'll drop you off. You go to the class. And then I'll pick you up like four hours later. And then I, that's where I had my aha moment. Cause we just went up and I, the teacher who is my love, Nina Morano from New York, who's amazing. She, it was a Meisner course. And we started and just kind of like, you look great. No, you look great. You look great. You look, you know, like I'm just back and forth. And I was just like, it was my aha moment. I was like, this is it. Like, oh my God, I'm, I, this is it. And that that and and then from there, I basically like did like a graduate acting program of my own that I designed. I did this Meisner course for two years. I did a movement voice, and just like ne I never, I never, still never stopped taking lessons and classes. Yeah, uh, yeah. and most good actors you know, are like that because <laughs> there's never you're never an expert. You're always a student. Mm -hmm. uh, the having a level of proficiency at something does not uh, ever, you know, make you want to stop learning. So, no, uh, I, I agree with that. So Meisner though was for you. That's very cool. I love Meisner. Yeah, and then, uh, and then um, when I moved to LA, I met my teacher there, Marjorie Valentine, and she's Stella Adler trained. And then I did all of that and did that work, which was like really, you know, very very beneficial for me. Okay, so. Um, Again, you've mentioned earlier that you have kind of your whole emotional um, spectrum available to you. So yeah. do you find, which which is, it's great. 
uh, <clears throat> when you're doing dramatic scenes, do you find that you can snap into it and then be able to leave that behind and be, you know, Lindsay again, or does it take you a while to kind of switch back and forth? No, I can switch back. I think I think I'm immersed like completely when I'm in it, and then I'm and then I'm out of it. So you're one of those really, uh, you know, rare and lucky ones. Okay, that's good. Well, I don't know. I mean, I like. I mean, maybe it is kind of sticking with me, and I don't realize. But sure. um, it's usually like if the like it's usually if the experience if the experience is good whether it's like working with a good director, or, you know, or the other actors are great. That's really what it's about. So then I'll feel good. If it's not, if it, if the work is not good, I'll feel real shitty. I get that. I get yeah. that. Um, that's, that's very cool. I, me personally, I find it difficult to, <clears throat> to kind of easily snap out of it. So there is a hesitancy on my end to go really deep because I don't know, you know, how long it's going to take me to get out. So, oh, wow. uh, yeah, and that's why I kind of created my own approach that allows me to go in and out. And that makes sense to me. And I think all of us do. Uh, yeah, I mean, I wonder, like, you know, when I was back in acting class, like, really, like, you know, when that was, like, my main focus, I think it was difficult because I would get so immersed into the roles, like, yeah. you know, and doing that emotional preparation and then just, like, and then I sort of think I would unwind watching other people do, go up and do their work and then sort of just watching, you know. Yeah. That yeah. makes sense. And then um, in, in different takes, again, you know, going back to drama and staying with that for a second. But when you're doing takes and when it's really heavy, uh, emotional stuff, um, what works for you to do things, take after take after take, and to have that emotion still be present and allow yourself to uh, to deliver what you need to do. Um, I mean, I'm. Uh, I I bet I would love working with David David Fincher. To me, there are not enough takes. I love like I like when someone pushes me, and you know, yeah. I feel like I can. If I'm prepared, like I think that's like maybe something like. I sort of like need to kind of get myself into like a place where I'm alone. I find like a corner on set somewhere where I can just like maybe listen to a song that's like really sad or whatever and just kind of um just really think about like where I came before like what happened right before the scene to sort of get but just recently I've had to do like I had to do like a really emotional scene on the show called Why Women Why Women Kill mm -hmm. it's a new show it's just it's on CBS all access Mark Terry show um and the best part about that was working with Jennifer Goodwin, who was just like an unbelievable actor. That yeah. I would say that's the key is working with a great actor who just like brings it every time and you don't have to you're not working, you're just sort of being. Yeah. Yeah. No, that that's true. I, I can understand that. I, I think, you know, I, I keep going back to the kind of the the scene that I had to do in which really for the most part it was just me and you know it's it's me i have to cry it's my daughter that just committed suicide and i have to do it and on some it's it's there and on some it's less and on others like i'm i'm not really feeling it and i am pretending to cry that i have mm -hmm. the emotion but then it's more of the acting technique rather than the reality and then it comes back again so i i didn't find that it was like on all the time it fluctuated but sometimes, you know, those takes where like the tears aren't coming, those are sometimes the best takes. Like I, I find that like, you know, I always think about this, like I think you I think trying not to cry yeah. is the best way to cry. Or just like and the best like because in real life, like we don't try to cry. Mm -hmm. You know, we try to not cry. And so like if I sort of get that in my head, like don't whatever you do, do not cry. Do not cry. Do not cry. And then the tears start to come. That's true. Yeah, that's a great technique. I um, hope everybody's listening and taking notes. <laughs> and certainly, I'm certainly putting that in my, you know, Rolodex of, of things to use. Um, very what's cool. The audience, what, what's the audience for this show? For this like, show, it's, it's actors who are working and it's uh, actors 
who are trying to get to that next step. So again, you know, I started the show with me and people like me in mind, and I'm the one who's, you know, right now trying to audition for co-stars. And, you know, I was on a check avail for a guest star that, uh, that didn't happen. So that's my kind of the highest that I've gotten, but it's mostly co-stars. And again, I'm in Chicago, so it's a completely different uh, market. Yeah. Uh, I, like, it, they're all like really important levels of like, building your career i mean like yeah. everyone starts with posters yep uh yeah. so the the audience is uh i have you know a lot of the people that have come onto the show are now the audience so they they enjoy uh listening to other actors uh who are uh who are in the business and are working so it now is varying but as it started out it started out being kind of actors who've been at it for a while who are not there and they want to know what it takes to get there so mm. that was, the audience at the beginning now it kind of all, all spread out yeah yeah um, I'd, love to, I'd love to answer questions that they would have i mean i would be happy to i mean i'm sure you have i'm sure there's a lot of your questions that they have right yep yep pretty much um and then uh you know transitioning kind of to uh to some of the shows that you've been on because you've been on so many shows and you've worked with so many people what if you had to pick one and i know it's it's a very silly question to uh, answer but if you had to pick one kind of experience that says you know that is my very favorite for this reason what show or movie would that have been uh getting on on hbo yeah. without a doubt okay why mm -hmm. well i was working with laurie metcalf niecy nash alex borstein and the, um yeah. um rodriguez i mean the guest stars were like betty buckley uh um rhea perlman um uh yeah. and gilbert who passed away last year um laurie metcalf is just like watching a master class every single day was like the best acting lessons i could have gotten from anyone and just the writing is incredible. If, if you guys have not seen the show, I highly, I mean, my part is small. I'm I'm in it throughout and I have like a couple of nice moments as you kind of go through the show, but um, it's so funny, it's so moving and it's sad and it's dramatic and just hilarious and weird. And it's about the healthcare system in, at hospice and um, it's incredible. Yeah um alex borstein is just one of a kind i i love her i think she's just tremendous me too um, friend of mine yeah. too yeah. yeah uh who would be and again this this is another kind of uh, uh maybe not difficult for you uh to answer but uh, usually proves to be a difficult question to answer for uh, for the guests who based on pure acting chops uh out of the people that you've worked with would you say is the best actor or actress out there I mean, well, I feel like, I mean, I work, I would say Lori Metcalf and Julia Louis Dreyfus are on the, yeah. I think anyone, I, if I could be even a tenth of, bring a, a tenth of what they bring to, to life, I would be happy. What? Well, what would you take away from uh, from kind of watching them, and what are some of the things that you've learned that now you're trying to implement? I think that they're both um, so present. I think that's the most important thing. They're always in the flow. It's never like, oh, they're acting now. They're you know, it's like they're always in the doing. And I think to me, that's what I look for in myself, like to do to make sure I'm doing that, like to. I think that's a really important part of auditioning also is is just being in the flow um not getting it doesn't have to be perfect it's mm -hmm. it's just that you're the character and you're listening and you're really saying what you mean in every moment and you're really listening in between when you don't have lines like i think that's like such an important well that's what i really learned from mm -hmm. being on working with Lori. is like a lot of it was me just listening and responding through facial expressions and just being present. That's, I don't know. Yeah. 
No, but you're right. And there's there's Meisner right there, <laughs> by the way. Oh, and then but, also, I have to say, what I learned from Lori the most, I, I used to watch her, she would walk through the scene. She would walk, like, she would, hmm. if she was going to go pick up a thing, she'd go over here, and then she'd go over here, and I'd see her, like, steering her lines. And I, I do that also now, because it's like, because sometimes you just want to see how long something's going to take you, and then, like, so you're ready for it so that you don't like sometimes just like picking up a glass like mm -hmm. you just want to be able to do that and keep talking in the scene as opposed to being like now i'm going to pick up this mm -hmm. you know you just want to like feel like you're a human being in a scene yeah um absolutely i i, I remember reading i'm looking at my you know bookcase right now um i have lots of acting books and one of the acting books is by uh, Michael Caine, and you know, does he say that? Huh? Does he say props don't lie, or no? Um, maybe I don't remember that particular one, but likely. Um, <laughs> and what he was what he was saying is that you know when you are when you have actions in a scene, when you need to pick up objects, when you need to uh, you know kind of go a number of uh, steps and then light a cigarette and then uh, you know say something. So the way that he would do it is he would kind of walk backwards um, and make sure that he gets into that rhythm. So when he has to do the scene, he doesn't have to think about it. He doesn't have to worry about where the mark is. It, it's already in the body and he can wow. be present. I found that very, very useful. And I immediately started applying it where if I need to you know, walk five steps and get to that mark, um, I would literally walk backwards uh, kind of in preparation for it, and it becomes much, much simpler. I don't have to think about it anymore. It's in the. Box. I love that. I yeah. love that. You know, I, I, that's a, I, a technique I use um, for auditions. Is I, I I learn it backwards, the lines. Really. Yeah, I do the scene backwards. Tell me more. Because I want to. I want to learn. If you can do it backwards, you can do it forwards. It's like you should be able to know exactly where you're going in the scene where it yeah. ends just because then it's like because you know how like so i don't know i always find that there's always like one monologue or one line that's just like why can i not get this right like what is wrong with me like why every time i get to this tape this audition on this tape we have to start over like why why and just like break that line down and not be scared of it and be excited for it excited for the worst line in the script yep that's that's cool I definitely get that, and I've been there. And it's it's always worse when that line is towards the very end, and you do a great. Like, sometimes you feel like you're the only one who's like going through it. It's like, but you think about all the people who are making this self tape. We're all everyone probably has some problem with that line. It's probably not a good line. They're probably, probably gonna rewrite it. Probably not. And again, I don't. Um, uh, your IMDb doesn't show it, but have you have you done a lot a lot of commercials? Because uh, commercials usually are filled with that sort of fun language. No, I I I haven't for some reason. Like when I started my career, I could not book a commercial for the life of me. And then I just I sort of kind of got past that point where, you know. Interesting. I, I find that interesting just from a pure casting perspective, but whatever. Um, in in commercials and again, kind of taking commercial classes and doing some commercials, um, a lot of the commercials have very specific language. And that language is not necessarily written for you to say it well. It's written because that's the way that they want the product presented. And yeah. there is a lot of specific jargon. And it has to be very, very, you know, uh, very specific. <laughs> I can't find a better word for it. And it just takes a lot of repetition. And after a while, what I found for me is like, I have it, I have it, I have it. But the more I keep repeating it after some point, your brain just says, I'm done. And yeah. I don't want to do it. And you kind of forget the lines and you have to just take a break and I come back to it. So it, it something happens in that process. I don't know if, if you're finding the same. Yeah, no, I I totally get that. <laughs> yeah, um, you uh, one of the one of the movies that I am about to uh, to watch uh, because I found it on your IMDb and I love these guys is the uh, Baby Makers. Um, oh, 
So the uh, broken lizard uh, kind of uh, guys, I'm watching Tacoma FD right now because I love them and it's it's kind of my way to unwind. Yeah. Um, so what uh, what was that um, kind of process like of working with guys who I am presuming there is a lot of uh, improv and uh, goofing around on set? Well, I do I do a lot of improv, so that was like, but I think that was kind of before I started getting really involved in improv. Yeah, it was awesome. It was like, you know, my scenes were with Olivia Munn, Aisha Tyler, Constance Zimmer. Yeah. I mean, well, it all is so easy. It's like, yeah, that's my favorite, my favorite thing. Because I'm a writer, too. So it's just like, if I can just kind of know who the character is and then, you know, act within the confines of just like what needs to get done in the scene, I'm thrilled. It was super fun. Do you find when you're doing improv, because again, I, you know, uh, my improv brain had to learn the hard way that I need to put the writer away because I'm a writer and doing mm -hmm. the improv, I immediately, you know, the person is saying something, I'm listening to them, but there is a part of me that's writing where this is supposed to go. And I'm going to say this and you're going to respond with this. And then I can get on right. there in the punchline. So I'm writing yeah. the script and I, it's, it took me a while to get out of that. So do you find that you have to put the, <laughs> the writer away and just be present? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think I was writing so much then. Um, I still do have a, like that. That's like the one thing I struggle with in improv is like, I mean, you know, my all my coaches be like, Lindsay, stop controlling the scene. It's not going to go where you want to go. And I'm like, I know. OK, OK. Um, uh, but um, and I think that was because I wasn't writing my own stuff at the time. And now 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 that I write more, it's actually a lot easier for me to let go. And just like sort of and like especially if you're working with like super talented people and everyone's being present yep. just yeah Very usually cool. it's great yeah um i love improv it's it's you know probably i don't know why every actor does not uh, do improv classes i think improv needs to be I, a I think, part of i think all humans should do improv i, I agree i absolutely yeah. agree um and okay. i mean, uh, I had so much fun yesterday. Uh, I had um, Allison Dunbar on, and she's Hello, Allison. awesome. She's, I know she's a friend of mine. Oh well, uh, you can see uh, the the interview that was done with her. Uh, it's the uh, the most recent one. So and my my partner is in the Groundlings mm -hmm. and you know performs with her all the time. She's inc incredible. The Groundlings no. are amazing. And I, you know, I'm Second City, so it's kind of you know, to me, it's all family. It's the it's the whole improv uh, improv world. But uh, it's like I, there's nothing more fun than just talking to somebody and then playing. Uh, yeah. That's like I, I was telling her, and I can't believe uh, that she hasn't watched it. I don't know if you have either. There's uh, there's a show that was on True TV. Unfortunately, it got canceled. It's called I'm Sorry. Have you watched I'm Sorry? Oh, with Andrea um, Savage, yeah. right? She's yeah. 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 I've seen it's great. I've seen a couple episodes. Yeah, and it, it's like that's that's you know uh, I call it that's my ocean, right? It's uh, you know you dive in, you know th these are your waters, these are your people, and you just get a chance to to have fun and let go and enjoy and play. So that's that's my my cup of tea. There it is. Yeah, I, I've used enough analogies. I'll stop now. Um, <laughs> Cool. All right. So a uh, few more questions for you. Uh, what's the weirdest thing that ever happened to you on a set? Any set? Hmm. Not, I can't. I, I'd be making it up if I said something weird. Hmm. I'll skip that. <laughs> no, no worries. Um, some, some people have a very specific story, by the way, to that question. And some people are like, I don't know. So it uh, this question is the is the kind of uh, usually in one of two camps. So no worries. Um, uh, I mean, really, then, I've, I, in my mind, I'm like I've had bad things, but I don't feel like t talking about those. <laughs> but uh, weird things, I think, is a, a weird thing. It's like, well, I, I'm so curious now. I have to watch some of these to see what people say. <laughs> uh, well, one one of them, uh, I'm not going to mention him uh, by name. I don't want people to watch it just for this particular question. But a wonderful actor from New York, he was uh, talking about a scene that he was doing in uh, in theater. He's a theatrical and an on-screen actor, and he was doing a scene 
and it was really, really, really hot. Um, and you know, they were doing a scene in which you have to wear kind of uh, you know skin tight uh, stuff. And um, in one of the you know one of the performances, he forgot to put the extra pair of kind of undershorts on. And then during the scene, something ripped. And then you know he's in the middle of the scene, and the audience sees uh, you know what you imagine they see. So that was the weirdest thing uh, kind of for him. Um, okay. So it, these kind of interesting things. Yeah, and like I one, I don't think I've had anything embarrassing or anything like that. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't have to be embarrassing. The weirdest thing that happened to me was in one of the films we were shooting on uh, uh, on the lakefront in Chicago. It was ex just freezing to the point where my fingers were frozen inside the gloves. And I was doing an emotional scene. I was, you know, uh, kind of burying my daughter and I had the urn uh, with the ashes and I was supposed to kind of turn and throw the ashes out and the wind blew at the wrong time and I had the ashes on my face. So that was the <laughs> weirdest thing uh, for me during that okay. emotional experience. Um, anyway, but that was that was mine. Um, what, uh, you know, out of uh, kind of, you're, you're a fairly well-known actress, uh, you know, on a star meter perspective. Well, uh, here's the fun part, right? So on a star meter, I don't know if you ever looked this up, but I find all this fascinating. Your star meter was as high as 84. So uh, that was, yeah. So you've been in the under 500 uh, twice. And that was probably were... a fluke. <laughs> huh? That's probably, that was probably a fluke. It was not a fluke. It was, uh, it was December 2018 through January of 2019. You are on uh, Big Bang Theory. Uh, and, okay. and uh, you know, um, it, it was kind of that, you know, a period where, People were searching a lot for you, so you were as high as the 84. So you're you're well known. There are lots of interviews of you that I watched, kind of uh, in in prep for the uh, for this. And my question is, is there something that you know most people would not know about you that you're comfortable sharing? Well, I do this. You know, I I, I have this show on Instagram that I that I that I started that I don't. Um, I think I might start it again, up again. It's called, um, I feel like we could be friends, which yeah. is like basically, <laughs> I started it during um, quarantine just because I felt like I was missing working and like meeting people. And it's like my favorite, one of my favorite parts of acting is like getting to work with other people. And so yeah. I go really deep on, on some of these interviews. Like I'm pretty open about, about my life, but I, I would say pe what people don't know about me is that I've just recently become, I've turned back as my piano is there. Um, I've become a songwriter and I'm writing a one woman musical. Awesome. Yeah. Um, and so I've never written songs before, but something just like came over me and it's all I do all day long in between. I'm going to be working on that show, The Good Doctor. I'm in Vancouver right now. Um, but um, in between everything, that's just all, that's what I do all day long is write wow. music. And that's yeah. very cool. Um, and I also do um, art. Here, I'll show you. Yeah, please. I do um, watercolors. Oh, that's so pretty. Thanks. That. that one's called. I feel. Uh, this one's called. I should. Uh, I should probably tell them I'm coming. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a good idea. <laughs> that's very. Cool. One of my yeah. hidden. I do all like arts. I guess I like. Say say hi to Elfina Luck uh, if you see her on set. Um, uh, she's in okay. the good. Yeah, she's um, she's wonderful, and she's a musician as well. So you can, and she's a songwriter. So you can you can okay. have a conversation about that. Yeah. Who did she, what character did she play? Uh, you know? I'm gonna have I'll to look. look up because I don't remember anyone. She's <laughs> she's a nurse. She's a recurring. She's been on like 14 or whatever number of episodes. Oh, um, okay. So Elfina Luck, so, um, you know, take a look. Hopefully, you know, guys run into each other. She's she's great. Uh, oh, cool. How are you finding Vancouver? Because I I talk to so many actors from Vancouver, like directly from Vancouver, that uh, I feel like I'm starting to know the place a little bit. I love it so much. If I was like, I would be so happy to book um, 
a regular out here i would be thrilled i think it's like it's like the city it's nature it's clean especially now i mean it's just nice not to be in the united states to be honest i feel really lucky to be here um but uh yeah i love it i love 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 the city yeah and and yeah. you've been to canada before again you you shot suits which was in uh, in toronto and you've done some other yeah. stuff in canada. and mob doctor and uh, wayward pines mm -hmm. that was something i was that's do you know the show wayward pines have you heard of that yeah yeah that i was um it's an interesting story actually because so they had cast an actor in my role originally and <laughs> they fired her and then um i was working on getting on and they had me come in make a tape in la and mm -hmm. they were like worked it out I, I was flying to vancouver the next day it was like one of those things and um M. Night Shyamalan said, I was the girl, like, I, you know, he was like, she was so funny, blah, blah, blah. And I uh, come out here, um, it's with all these famous people. Like, it was just like, I was the only not famous person who was in, in the show. And then shoot like five scenes in a pilot, which was like, so, I mean, a, a huge role in the pilot. That was like, yeah, it was, it was a big deal. It was like a big deal that I got this part. And then um, the show came out and i was not in the pilot nobody nobody was in my part but all the scenes were gone yeah, i ended up doing like the next episode i still played the lead girl's sister but they yeah. just cut the whole story line. and nobody told me aye, aye. yeah did you, say, <laughs> did you say m night Shyamalan? No? he directed it okay yeah, um, I, I have a love-hate relationship with his work. <laughs> yeah, I understand that. Yeah, um, it's interesting. I actually invited him to my show. Uh, his reps uh, got back to me today saying that uh, he's uh, he's passing. Hopefully, he'll come <laughs> on uh, someday so we can talk about it because I have lots of uh, questions for him. Like one of my favorite movies is uh, one that he did, and one of the, my least favorite movies is one that he did. So I'd like to talk to him about it. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. He's also a good actor too. You know, he's an actor. I I'm not sure that I've seen him, uh, or at least not to my recollection. So yeah, I'll, I'll take one. Was in one of his movies. I forget which one. Hmm. But I was like, oh, he's good. Yeah. I forget which one. Um, I, I'm still like signs. Uh, I, I I remember seeing signs in the movie theater, and I. It just throughout the whole movie, I thought, okay, I, I this is not something that I'm enjoying. I don't like it. And then in the middle of the movie or towards the very end, close to the reveal, you could see that you can, you know, here's the, here's the screen, right? So here's the screen. Yeah. And then on top of the screen, you're actually seeing in, this, in the uh, shot, you're seeing a boom. And you're seeing, so it was not even edited uh, properly. I'm like, okay, that's it. I'm done. <laughs> so, and I thought that the, uh, I thought that the aliens were just awful. Um, that that whole movie did not do anything for me. But you know, uh, Sixth Sense I thought was amazing, and it's one of my favorite uh, movies ever. So he kind of has, uh, you know, he's on both ends of my spectrum. Um, anyway. Um, Okay, last question for you is um, <laughs> if you had a chance to go uh, back in time and talk to the you know young girl, uh, young version of yourself who is just about to embark on this acting adventure and you can give one piece of advice, what would that be? You're better than you think you are. Okay, that's a good advice. And, and, to, tr and to trust yourself and to, yeah. Don't, don't listen so much to everyone else. Have you had a lot of people who are naysayers uh, and telling you not to? Not you know, even that, but no, just that um, 
I, I find that like I there's there is so much about what I can do that I just didn't know that I could do. Mm-hmm. And don't wait for someone to tell you that you can do something. That's really what it is. It's like just try it. Just try. Yeah. That's perfect. Well, best of luck with everything that you're doing. You. Um, I'm gonna go and check out some of the things that you've been on now. You know, now I need to get back on Netflix and and move some shows up. No, 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 there's too much. Only watch what you want to watch. I don't. I don't watch it for me. <laughs> well, I, I'm gonna lie. If it's just for you, it's also for Martin. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's true. Watch it for Martin. Yeah. Um, so, but thank you. My dog uh, is is saying hello. So hello to my dog. Um, and uh, it's it's really cool. I I, I really love the the interest and the excitement uh, that you have for acting and being someone who is very successful at this you still have it, which is really really cool oh thanks <laughs> i hope so i hope so yeah. oh please please keep it don't don't ever lose it that's uh that's the driving part of it. <laughs> well so nice to meet you thank you so much likewise and thanks to everybody for tuning in we appreciate uh uh you enjoying another episode in which we get to talk acting and geek out and uh, have fun and uh thanks take care everybody bye